M0FXB, welcome back to the shack. Someone asked me to get these two together. So we've got the Yesu FT991 and the new Yesu FTX one on top. You can get the Optima model, which is pretty much the same size as the FT991. They are similar in many ways when running in the Optima version. Uh, I would say the key difference here, if I just back out, is that the FTX has got dual receive. So if you look on the left, we've got HF running. Not too busy. Independent volume and RF gain as well. All the usual HF bands and frequencies. In different modes. Let's turn that back down. And then on the right hand side here. We've got C4FM Australia to uh, yeah, Australia, is it? <laughs> and have you ever seen this in group mode? Watch this. If I press the group mode button on top, how good this looks. As they as they talk, it pulses because we're in like a group now. It's yeah, sending no, information, well, it I can receiving say, I can information. Say that, so where are you? Uh, what's the QDH at the moment there, Rover? Even location details and distance. Uh, QDH, you can actually QDH. send messages. Up here. Come out of group mode. Yeah, Roger, Roger. Let me just turn that down and turn up the 991. And then we'll go to B, where we're on the same frequency using a hotspot. So a lot of people are saying, well, is, uh, well, is it worth... There's always one degree of separation. Have a little look. Yeah, well, I, work, I used to work with Ian on the 2.4 gig MNBS microwave distribution system for, um, uh, was it OSAC? Not OSAC, uh, OSTAR. Well, OSTAR used to work... Good old rag to you there on, on C4 FM YSF. So a lot of people are saying, you know, what's the main difference? What's the difference in the cost? Is it worth the extra money? So £2,069 for the Optima version and uh, 1300 for the 991A. But it does have a built-in antenna tuner. It is single receive, although you've got A and B. Okay, you can see you've got A and B. And there's your HF bands there. Not too, not busy today at all. But it'll be it'll pick up later. It's very early in the morning here. But it'll pick up later. You wait and see. Go back to B. Of course, we've got an X button. They've both got X buttons. I can't remember if this one does group mode. I can't, oh, it does. Look, there it is there. <laughs> so it does, yeah. There you are. So they're both in group mode, group mode now. It should pulse each other now. There's me. And the two stations talking, although they're coming up with one call sign. Oh, there it is there. VK2, KGB, VK1. Uh, so, yeah, it works great. You get the map here on the FTX1. Of course, a full APRS with the FTX1. I think it's really hard to choose between the two because it's such a big difference in the price. You're talking double the price. Um, yes, you do. It is two radios in one. The way they've managed to cram most of it into the into this small portable unit is is fantastic and you'll just see there but when it's got the optima connected to it then it's not small it's about the same size as the as the 991 we've got buttons there and the same size screen as the 710 so you know many have said to me well i'm keeping my 991 and you can do that you can get yourself a little dual band vhf uhf but if you really want the latest with everything in one place, um, then you, it's going to cost money. And, you you know, that's that's the, the bottom line. If, you know, if you look at the some of the amazing sets out there, like the seven six, the ICOM 7610, the Yesu FTDX 101, you're going to have to pay. Um, it's def I feel like it is worth what you pay, the FTX, you know, the full Optima kit. It's a shame that we have to pay extra for the... GPS and the Bluetooth and even the carry handle. I think that's, I never liked it when companies do that. But their argument will be, well, it's to keep the price of the radio down. And you think the firmware and the, and the sort of 
they call it R&D, the research and development costs to create the firmware and then obviously the hardware of a radio like this is incredible. I mean, look at this display, you know. This is this was, you know, that you're talking, I don't know, I can't even put a figure to it, but you're talking in a massive amount of work to uh, get to the, this point. I know there's a few bugs, but they'll sort them out. I've been going through, I think I found about five bugs out of the hundreds of functions that I've been tinkering with. That includes APRS, VHF, UHF, six meters, repeat, you know, adding my local repeater here. And, uh, you know, it's, um, and, and I find that for the amount of functions that this radio has, that the bugs are, uh, will soon be sorted. They're nothing, they're nothing to worry about. Let's see if we can get some uh, normal FM here. Oh, yeah. So what I'll do there. is at the top here on the left, because it is a dual receive radio. On this side, I'm going to hold down the band button and go to 430, which is 434550. Pressing the wrong button. Look at the meter. You can select the meter you like. Big well. finger syndrome. Um, just out of curiosity, how are you coming in? I'm coming in through a hot spot in through VK DMR on 8409. There you go. Oh, oh wow. <laughs> so you can select which meter you want, you know, this side or this side, just by pressing sub. It'll switch between the two. So if I, look, if I click sub back on the right <laughs> press of course squelch volume hold down if you want to change mode back button here and we're actually dual receiving now let's get show you that and this is what wow so Anyway, you could only single receive, but of course you can select the bands. You've got all your bands here. You can enter the frequency. And look at it. Air band works great on both of these. I find. No problem at all with air band. And you can decide the span of the... If you look at the scope, span. We've got it on 50. Let's do 100. Got the dimmer set in here, and if you press and hold the menu, there's your menus. You can scroll forward to the three menus, or you can just press, press forward and back. The menu structure here, it's a very long menu, it's 150, but once you get used to it, it you, it's not too bad. Then you've got the shortcut menu that you scroll through. It's a lovely set, you can change some of these colors. I would say for HF, Probably band. Um, I feel like they could, you know, make the scope a lot bigger just with a firmware change. I don't know why they haven't done that. So, of course, tuner. And if we have the Optima version, we're going to have a tuner on that one as well. All the essential settings that you would expect from a ham radio receiver, clarifier, tuner, VFO memory, this one's got split mode, I believe, PMG mode, I don't know if you've ever seen that on some of the older sets, not older, other sets from, it's the newer set, sorry about that, how did I get myself into this mess? Let's try PMG a minute. No, it's not going to let me. Probably have to add a few in there. There you are. There's P one PMG added, and you can add a few. So if I come out of PMG, and then select, say, the B band. Um, hold PMG again. And look, you get the signals there. And you can, I think you can do five, and you can delete them as well. <laughs> peculiar is the correct word right okay so um there you are dual receive no problem at all look at the group mode if we're on c4fm which is on the b band 
group mode and then all the stations talking on C4FM on this channel uh, right now or in this room will appear on my radio as long as I'm receiving them of course come out of that PMG APRS VFOs and memory I mean where do we begin where do we end so give us some feedback which one do you prefer we'll go back to the cost again if you've already got the 991 1300 pound I know there's some better deals out there there's cashback deals now for the 991 and the set I would say that the 710 is probably the best the best value on the market at the moment for a HF six meter radio. Don't forget these are both shack in the boxes. Um, so you do need to consider that. But if you've already got a dual band radio, which most, I would say every ham I know has, you might go, well, actually I can just keep my 991. Or you might go, no, I want the latest. I like the latest. You know, you only live once. Can't take it with you sort of attitude. And you could go, no, I want to, um, I want to enjoy the best equipment that's out. You know, when I say the best, I more mean the latest. But, you know, these gadgets are just getting crazily amazing, aren't they? Bye for now. Thanks for watching my YouTube channel. Any questions, fire away. But, you know, when it comes to bugs, because I've, I've had so many people say, it's got bugs, it's got bugs, you haven't finished it. Any radio that has just been released is going to have some bugs. Any radio. Um, and so give them a chance to iron them out. And But does it have an impact on using the radio? No, of course it doesn't. It's just, these are tiny little bugs. That's why they're called bugs. And is it worth doing a video with the title? Um, bugs? and no, Not really sure. I may make a, a list of the few the few bugs that I have found, but they are literally, I think it's less than five bugs, and they're not even, they don't really affect the using of the radar. They're just things that I've noticed. Anyway, thank you very much. Bye for now. 7-3, recommend all Yesu radios. I think they're all amazing. Bye for now.